Hey everybody, it's Mama 2 Wife 1 and thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. As you can tell from the title of this video, we are here to discuss Married at First Sight Season 16 Episode 5 entitled It's All About the Journey. This season we're in Nashville, Tennessee. In this particular episode, all the couples have finally made it to Jamaica for their honeymoon. And I was trying to think why this episode was going the way it was going. Like the pacing for me felt a little different. It was moving a little slower. And I realized that it's the first episode in a while where we didn't have any of the couples getting together. It was just them individually. Every scene was just allowed us to focus on one couple at a time. And if you've been watching the show for a while, you know, it'll watch my channel for a while. You know, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is that they always put all of the people together like every single episode. And keep in mind, the pacing of the episodes is very different from the pacing in real life. So while they're on day like two or three of their honeymoon, which equates to about day five of their marriage, we're in week five of the show. So if that's the case and you're bringing them together every single episode, that means they're getting together every two or three days, which is way too much. Because how are you going to get to know your spouse if you're constantly comparing your marriage to the other marriages? Never made sense to me. So I'm glad that in some way, someone who produces the show, I'm sure watches my videos. Thank you guys so much. Because they were like, you know what? Mom to wife of one made a good point. Why are we always putting them together? We need to have them separately. So thank you for whoever watches the show, who watches my channel. Because I'm sure you guys got the idea from me. I'm going to take full credit for it. And you're very welcome. So the show last night for me was kind of boring. I don't think it's because we didn't have them all together. I think that some of the couples are just boring me. So I'm actually going to start with the most boring couple, in my opinion, which is Dominique and McKinley. Or as my husband likes to say, the young chick and the white boy. And there's nothing really happened with them. Like they're holding hands. They kiss a little bit. They had a little moonlight swim. And they went like sailing and he was acting like a scaredy cat. Oh, I'm going to fall off and I don't think we should do this. And I'm thinking that he's going to be driving the sailboat and that's why he's so concerned about falling off. But he was just on it on a life ride while somebody else drove. I'm like, what the heck were you scared about? You're not even doing nothing but sitting there. Regardless, she she was like, well, I don't know. He may not be as adventurous as I am because she's very much a country girl. She's a tomboy. She loves the outdoors and likes being adventurous and doing all this stuff. And he said, I'm really hoping that, you know, I wanted to marry someone who would get me out of my comfort zone and help me to be a little more adventurous and not be so scared to do things. And it's like, I understand wanting that. And I think in a marriage, it's okay to kind of lean on that. I want to say lean. It's okay to allow your spouse to influence you to do things that maybe you wouldn't normally do and vice versa. But I don't think it's fair on her to be responsible for doing that. Because at some point that gets tiring, I have to constantly convince you to do these things. They have to constantly like kind of talk you down. One thing I did like is that when he kept complaining about getting on this boat and like, oh, we're going to fall. Oh, what about sharks? What about this? She was like, if you complain one more time, I'm going by myself. So I like that she's already determined that, look, I'm going to do these things. I'm If you don't want to do it, that's fine. This is my honeymoon as well. I'm still going to do some fun stuff. So I appreciate that she at least stood up in that manner, even though she was kind of jokey. But yeah, nothing really happened with them. I thought it was pretty, I think as a couple, they're just very boring. I still don't feel any chemistry whatsoever. Even when they kiss, it just feels like this is something we're supposed to do. Holding hands. Oh, this is something we're supposed to do. We're just holding hands. La, 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 la. And it's just, it's not doing anything for me at all. So they're boring, and I'm just going to say that, and I don't care. And now I want to talk about Kirsten and Shaquille. I will say that this episode made me really like them even more as a couple. I never had an issue with them before. I definitely, with Kirsten, kind of thought, like, mm, she might be a little high maintenance or whatever. I don't think that anymore. I really don't. I feel like she is really feeling her way. She admitted that she moves kind of slow, that she's a little hesitant to be vulnerable and open up and all that stuff, which is not terrible. It's not a terrible thing because Shaquille does seem like he's a patient person, but obviously that patience at some point is going to run out. I want to start by saying this. So they were the couple who he had to go to Mississippi because he's getting his doctorate. He had to go to Mississippi for a research project and she came with him. Fine, whatever. But what I didn't understand until this episode is that while he was giving his presentation, she wasn't allowed to be in the room. So she was in the hotel the whole time while he was doing it. She's like, oh, I was so glad to be there to support you. Here's my thing. 
if I can't even be in the room with you to watch you do this great, wonderful thing, then I'm not really supporting you. I'm just here at the crib waiting for you. I could have been in Jamaica in the whole t- the honeymoon suite waiting for you there. I would have had your rum punch on ice. I would have been, you know, I would have been chilling. I could have had bided my time on the beach in Jamaica waiting for you to come there and meet me there. And it would have still been a lovely honeymoon. She's a better woman than I, which is fine. They got there. The room was beautiful. Everything was great. And I notation that I wrote that I really, really like his energy. Something about Shaquille that I really like. He seems very genuine, very honest. He seems like he really, really wants this and that he's really digging Kirsten. And even though we had some moments at the wedding where she wasn't completely sure because she didn't like the fact that he was bald. She liked the fact that he's younger, even though it's by a year. But you can tell that she genuinely likes being around him. He makes her very comfortable. Because when you are not comfortable with the person and when you're feeling awkward and uncomfortable and all that stuff, you will not touch them. You will flinch when they get a little too close. They take every opportunity to just touch each other in some way. He has his arm around her a lot and she welcomes it. She's not flinching away. She doesn't look awkward at all. And I love that in such a short period of time, they have already really like that kind of intimacy is already there. Now they are the only couple who have not kissed yet. And we learned this episode that she thinks she is a bad kisser. And I tell you guys, I have this group chat with three of my, two of my uncles, my aunt and my mother who are all 65 plus, all four of them. And my uncle was like, my uncle, my aunt, one of them was like, my mother, actually, she's like, how can you be a bad kisser? It is very possible to be a bad kisser. However, I think you're only a bad kisser. Well, actually, you know what? I won't say bad. I, I will say I've dated people or have kissed people where the kissing has not been great. But I'm realizing now it's not that they're a bad kisser. Is that they kissed in the way that maybe their last person liked. Not everybody likes the same kind of kisses. Not everybody likes tongue in their mouth. Some people like a little tongue. Some people like a lot of tongue. Some people like pecs. Some people like to kiss all over your face. There's so many different ways of being intimate when it comes to kissing. And not everybody likes the same thing. So her saying she's a bad kisser, I'm assuming that means that either she feels awkward doing it or someone has told her in the past that she cannot kiss. But the whole point of being with this person now who is your spouse is that you have to learn what they like, whether it's kissing, whether it's sex, whether it's the way they like to have an argument, whether it's the way they like to sleep in the bed, whether it's the way they like, you know, their meals to be played at the dinner time, whatever it is, this is the learning process, right? And I feel like not to force into doing something she's not ready for, obviously, but this is the perfect time to get to know Shaquille on that level, to allow him to teach you what he likes. And vice versa, because even if she doesn't think kissing is her thing, there are other things that she obviously likes, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever. So this is time for him to learn what those things are as well to make sure she's as pleased as he hopes to be. So I'm really hoping that she'll take this time to let herself go a little bit and she'll take advantage of this opportunity to really get into that, especially if, you know, we don't know yet. But especially if for Shaquille, kissing could be a really important thing for him. And he didn't necessarily say it was or it wasn't. But I know for me personally, kissing is a big deal for me. I love to kiss. And it's funny because my husband, when he and I first met, he was not big on kissing. He would kiss me, but it wasn't like important to him in his other relationships. Those women didn't necessarily want that. So he didn't have to kiss a lot. But now he's with someone like me. So now kissing is just as important to him as it is to me because he understands, okay, she feels loved when I kiss her a lot. So therefore he kisses me a lot. It's all a learning process. So I'm really hoping Kirsten and Shaquille will kind of, you know, get on the same page when it comes to that. They went ATV riding, and I was not expecting her to be the one that's like, yeah, I love adventure, and I love going fast. I didn't expect her to be that. I thought she would, and I'm sure, you know, I had horrible misconceptions about her. I assumed that she was going to be a little more prissy, a little more like, oh, no, I'm dirty. I don't want to do this. But she got in there. She was chilling. And it was funny, though, because she got on the ATV, and she said, you know, he's really nervous. I can tell he's nervous, but he has a big smile on his face. He had a big smile on his face because she was in front of him on the ATV in some biking shorts. And if you saw Kirsten's body, she is very curvy. The booty is popping. It's sitting high. It's big and it's round. And you in some bike shorts? Of course, he had a smile on his face because this is the view he has in front of him. Duh. I just thought that was a really funny comment. 
But he was nervous and he was driving really slow. But then he admitted that, you know, he had a bad car accident when he was really young. And he still has some slight PTSD of the accident. So he didn't want to go too fast. So I was like, okay, well, now that he explained it, I, I understand that is valid. But I'm glad that eventually he got into it and he was driving fast and he was keeping up with her. And they saw a beautiful scenery and it was just really nice and pretty. So I was like, okay, that's really cool. He said that he's attracted to her. And he, he was like, I still get butterflies when I look at you. It's been three days, sir. Not still get butterflies like it's been 20 years. It's been three days. Okay, you still get butterflies. That's great. She did tell him, she admitted that she was not attracted to him at first. She said the bald head. So she didn't even say, I didn't find you cute at all. She was like, the bald head threw me off. But he could see that, okay, in a span of three or four days, she's definitely warming up to me. He was like, she said she had my bald head, but now she's rubbing my bald head all the time. So I can tell that she's getting into it because she's really falling for his personality. And I've said this so many times before, especially for this show. Yes, physical attraction is important in any relationship. But physical attraction can also grow the more you get to know a person. And if you are matched with this person, you know that the experts match you for a reason. That means this person most likely, even if they don't look the way you want them to look, they probably still check all the boxes of what you claim you want in a spouse. And that means they're probably going to challenge you in the way you need and want to be challenged as well. So if you give that part a chance, the physical attraction will definitely grow. You may still not necessarily think this person is the finest thing that's ever walked the planet, but that attraction is going to grow because you're like, oh man, they are attentive or they're funny, they're honest, they're treating me better than anybody else I've ever been with. Like that just kind of naturally happens. So I'm glad that he wasn't offended and I'm glad that they were having a really open, honest conversation about it. And that again, she's showing that she's definitely warming up to him when it comes to the attraction piece. And I said this, I really, really like them as a couple. I think on paper, they make sense. I love the way they talk to each other. And that's what I put in my notes. Like, I'm really liking them more and more. I really like Shaquille and Kirsten. I'm really hoping that they stay together because I can tell that they both want this. I can tell that they're both serious about it. And I can tell that they're willing to take their time and just really enjoy each other's company. I really appreciated that. We're going to go to Nicole and Chris. I didn't really have a lot of notes for them either. Nicole, or like my husband calls them, the, the short girl. And Chris is kind of... Chris is just kind of there like oh okay there's Chris if he walked into my house right now I wouldn't know right away that it's him Nicole has more distinctive features so I could pick her out of a crowd Chris I don't think I could he just looks very typical very standard very normal looking dude which is okay he said he could see himself falling in love with Nicole she pretty much said the same thing it's very easy to say when it's been three or four days. You're on your honeymoon. Nothing has happened. You've gotten married. You had a free wedding. You had free food at the wedding. You had lunch the next day, breakfast or whatever, with your new in-laws, which was like, okay, yay, in-laws, I ate breakfast. And then you got right on a plane and went to Jamaica. Nothing has happened at all. You guys have been drinking and lounging and chilling, which is great. But it's easy to say, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. I couldn't imagine anything better been three days like it it always bothers my mom when they say that like okay we we get it everybody's like that because technically if you guys were not married and these were dates as opposed to three days of marriage let's say these are three dates obviously in the first few dates you're putting your best foot forward or as someone i know likes to say you are giving your representative when you go to a interview a job interview whatever you are giving your best self they don't need to know what you were doing at the club last night they don't need to know about your personal life they need to know right in front of you this is what you're getting i am educated i am serious i'm loyal i am blah 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 blah. those are all the things that you're giving in the first three dates as well for the most part you're giving your best self so of course in three days of marriage three or four days of marriage whatever this is what they're giving to so i was like okay i'm just gonna dismiss that they went rum tasting which I thought was an interesting thing to do on vacation. I'm like, oh, let's do something different. Let me tell you what you won't catch me doing. Because it's not just rum tasting. It's not just like, oh, we're going to taste some drinks with rum in it. No, they took straight shots of rum, like six or seven straight shots of just different kinds of rum. You better know that if I'm on vacation, you better give me all the fruity drinks that I can handle. They can all have rum in it. That's fine. But A... They ain't going to be straight. Give me some fruit, some whatever, juice, dump something in there with the rum. That's first and facts. And then B, 
don't give it to me seven in a row. Like, you got to pace yourself. Give me, like, one in the morning with my breakfast, maybe a little mimosa, you know, keep a little light. And then we can have some throughout the day. But I was like, they're hardcore because I ain't doing that. That's just a no-go for me. But the conversation turned into, you know, drinking reminded Nicole of the old Nicole before she moved to Nashville. Now, she's the only bride that's from Queens. She's from New York, where everybody else is from Tennessee. She talks about the old Nicole and how before she was selfish, she was drinking a lot, but coming to Nashville, she has a new version of herself. She is a lot more self-aware. She's a lot nicer. She doesn't drink as much, doesn't party as much, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like, okay, that's nice. But I thought it was weird, not weird, but when people talk about how they were in the past, it does, I think it's unfair a little bit when their current spouse will now not throw the past in their face, but use the past as a red flag. And it's like, okay, but because Chris basically said, like, I would not have liked the old Nicole because I don't like that at all. I don't like this, this, and this. And he's getting himself worked up about it. And it's like, but she's not that. She just told you that was the old version of her. So I guess they're bringing it up to the, she's bringing it up to kind of let him know more about her. I think that was her intention. But him focusing on it, is almost like he's not willing to accept this new version of her or like he's afraid that old version of her is going to resurface. But it's like she hasn't, you've known her for three or four days. Get, right now, give her the benefit of the doubt. She says this is the old Nicole. Trust that this is the old version of her and that the version you're getting now is the newer, more improved version. She's telling you all of this so that you can have a clear picture. Because like she said, which I appreciate, she's like, we're not going to know everything about each other. But on decision day, I want us to go in there and make a confident decision because we have all the information that we believe we need. And I appreciate that. And I think, again, that's why she's exposing some of her past to him. But I didn't really care for his reaction because he could have just been like, you know, I'm so glad that she has made a change and that she's not that person anymore. As opposed to him focusing on, I would never like that person because that person was blah, 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 blah. Okay, but she's not that. So don't get worked up. Don't focus on that because she's telling you that was the old me. This is the new me. Focus on that. I also thought it was, well, he did say to her that, because I guess they talked about how he, it takes a lot for him to lose his cool. She said, it takes, it doesn't take me as much. Like, you know, are you bothered by that? You know, can tell me the truth. Are you bothered that maybe I would fly off the handle before you would? And, you know, he was like, as long as it's not, at me. He's like, if you lose your cool with me, like, I'm not tolerating that. I'm not for that. And I like the fact that his moniker is Mr. Nice Guy. And, you know, all of his friends have said, you know, he's been too nice in relationships and all that stuff. But I'm glad to know that even with him having that moniker of Mr. Nice Guy, that at least he has some boundaries for himself. So I appreciate that. And I know she appreciates the fact that he was able to voice his boundaries to her as well. And I was surprised that he brought up having kids first. And this is always the tricky thing. Every season, almost every season, there's always a couple who have a interesting conversation when it comes to children. It's always interesting or shaky when a person says, well, I don't know, I never really thought about kids. I'm kind of fine either way having them. And I'm not going to say that you're lying. I'm not. But I think for the most part, having kids is very black or white, yes or no. There are very few people, I firmly believe there are very few people who are legitimately on the fence about having children. And so she was like, well, I never really thought about it. I'm very career focused, but, you know, I'm not opposed to it. So, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, you know, I'm not really thinking about it right now. I think in another year or two, we can have, you know, a deeper discussion about it and, Pairing someone like that, this is Nicole saying this, pairing someone like that who was like, I've never really thought about it, I'm focused on my career, with someone like Chris who was like, I want to, a boy and a girl. That's not really on the same page. And yes, she could decide, yes, I want kids, but what you never want ever is for a person to decide or agree to have children to appease their partner. That is not fair to anybody involved. It's not fair to the person who made the decision. It's not fair to the partner who knows that they're married to someone who doesn't really want these kids. And it's not fair to the kids who definitely are like, dang, how come this parent spends a lot of time with me and this parent, you know, just kind of treats me like a burden. It's not fair to anybody involved. So no one should ever make that kind of decision. 
And I don't, I feel like Nicole's personality is very strong. And I, and I want to believe that as much as she's going to care for Chris in the future, I want to believe that she wouldn't do that just to appease him. And I know that he wouldn't want her to do that either. So it is interesting because I know that when they go through this process, the experts clearly ask them about children. And so it doesn't make sense to me to pair somebody who says he wants children and then you kind of try to clean it up at the end. Like, oh, well, this is a decision we can decide together. And, you know, it it, it happens. It happens. It's like, mm, the fact that you've already thought, the fact that Chris has already thought about having two and having a boy and a girl means that you actually want children. Anyone who's blasé about it isn't thinking about how many they actually want. They're just like, oh, okay, I haven't really thought about it. I don't think it's right to pair someone who clearly wants children with someone who's just kind of, it doesn't matter to me, I'm on the fence. Again, I think having kids is pretty black and white. You do or you don't, you will or you won't. Like, I, I don't believe this kind of wishy-washy thing when it comes to kids. I don't, I don't really buy that. So I don't know how much of an issue that'll be in the future, but I do think if that was an actual deal breaker for Chris or even for Nicole, that again, they would have brought it up to the experts and they wouldn't have been paired together in the first place. So hopefully it doesn't turn into a thing, but you know, with this show, they're going to turn into a thing just because that's just what they do. Okay. Jasmine and Eris. So I like Jasmine. I actually like Eris, so I don't have a problem with Eris. My mom has an issue with the fact that he's always talking about sex, but he's a man, and he's a married man at that. Like, that's just who it is. And if you're curious, my husband referred... Mind you, my husband does not watch the show, but he'll ask me every Wednesday night, like, oh, so what happened with the couple? So what does such and such do? He doesn't remember anybody's name. So Jasmine and Eris to him is the beauty queen and a funny-looking dude. I'm like, okay, husband, I got you. I don't know why Eris is clocking how much this girl eats bacon. Leave her her swine. Let her have her swine. Leave that chick alone. But he's like, throughout the whole episode, you had it again. Didn't you have it three days ago? And you had it three, two days ago and one day ago. So you eat it every day. You eat it 80% of the time. Man, leave her alone. Leave, Let her have her swine. There is nothing wrong with the swine. Leave this chick alone. So that alone is like, what is you doing, little dude? Uh, he said most of relationships didn't work because he was immature and make it up too soon. And she said she also walked away from relationships because she didn't always get what she needed. I thought that he didn't have any real relationships. He said he was with the girl for a year and a half, but I, I don't know. I, I still think he's not as... Uh, well, I'll say this. I like that they both were taking accountability. I like that he was very clear, like, I wasn't ready I was immature. It was all me. And even she was saying, I left. I wasn't getting what I needed, so I definitely left. She didn't say, though, that was interesting, it's one thing to not get what you need in a relationship. That is definitely ground sleeve. I get that. But it's another thing if you're not getting what you want in a relationship and you have not voiced what you want. We don't know if she necessarily voiced her needs or not. I'm going to assume that she did and that's why she left. But that could be something to explore later on if she's not good at really expressing herself and expressing what she desires from people. I did like that they had a conversation about her responsibilities and about her mom. If you all remember, her mom is, I think she's a breast cancer survivor, but I think that she, I think, I don't know if she's a survivor or she's still going through the process, but she did say, she mentioned that, you know, her mom going through chemo and she kind of switched herself between that. And, you know, she's still, like, coaching the cheerleaders and doing all this other stuff and, you know, doing the fostering dogs and stuff. And I liked that, well, she said that in the midst of all of that, sometimes I can shut down. She was like, I'm not shutting you out or I'm going to try not to shut you out, but sometimes I shut down because things are just too much. So I like that his media thing was, okay, I got you. Let me know what you need. Do you need me to bring food to the hospital? Do you even want me to walk the 20 dogs? Like whatever I can do to help you, like let me know what that is. And I love that he said that to her, but I also love that she was clear about, I appreciate that, but it's going to be hard because when you're used to doing everything by yourself, it's not easy to immediately make that switch in your head that, oh, I can call Eris to do this. That's right. I have a husband. He can do this. It's not easy to make that switch. So hopefully he'll be patient with her. Hopefully he'll continue to make himself available to help her in whatever way that is. Because sometimes when people are going through a lot of stuff like that, you don't know how to help them. 
it could be something small as sending them some flowers to let them know you're thinking about them or calling them to check on them, surprising them by ordering food and having it sent to their house or sent to their parents' house or whatever. Just little things. So I really hope that Eris is serious about that because it seems like that's something she needs that she has not had before. And they were having, they, well, they went snorkeling, which I thought was really cute. They're having dinner. And she's like, oh, is there anything you want to know about me? And he asked her, what's your favorite sexual position? Now, I didn't have a problem with this question because this is something that you need to know. I think maybe she was a little thrown off and she's like, oh my gosh, we've only been together for a few days. And she kind of choked on the food a little bit and was like, I plead the fifth. I'm not answering that question. But I think that it led to a bigger discussion. I'm looking at my notes. That's why I keep looking up. It led to a bit bigger discussion because she said that it's hard for her to express what she wants when it comes to sex. And I think that's a good thing for your husband to know. Some may, you know, question, maybe he doesn't need to know that right away. But I think that's important because if it's hard for you to talk about sex, there could be other topics that's hard for you to discuss as well. Like I said earlier, maybe it's hard for her in general to talk about what she wants, not just when it comes to sex. That's something that Eris needs to know. So I didn't have a problem with that line of questioning at all. I, and she did say, you know, she's like, I like sex. I'm hoping my husband will help me to like it more. So that gives me the impression that she has had okay sex, but she's never had great sex. I don't know if Eris is the one to give her great sex. I guess time will tell, because as of this episode, no one has had sex yet, at least as far as we know. And it's not, it's funny because I had explained to my husband, like, yeah, nobody's had sex. He's like, how has nobody had sex in my five weeks? I was like, no, it's been four days for them. It's been five weeks for us. And I have to keep reminding myself of that, because it's like, yo, y'all been married for a minute. And it's like, actually, no, it hasn't been a week yet. So it makes sense that nobody's had sex yet. Normally, not normally, most likely someone's going to have sex before the honeymoon is over. My money is on Nicole and Chris being intimate first. Between Nicole and Chris and Jasmine and Eris, I think between those two couples, one of them is going to have sex first. And I really think it's going to be Nicole and Chris, personally. But Eris did say this thing that I thought was kind of dumb, and my husband thought it wasn't dumb. I thought it was dumb. They're playing Frisbee. And he notices that she has a frisbee in her left hand. He's like, oh, you, he's like, you left-handed? She's like, yeah, I'm left-handed. He's like, oh, so you write with your left hand? Isn't that what left-handed means? I, I, isn't that what that means? My husband was like, well, no, but some people do one thing with the other hand, do this with the other. I was like, no, I think it was a dumb question. I, I didn't think it made sense. Either way, they played frisbee. They took a little walk. He said that he's never been in love. Now, this is my thing. Just like I said, every season they have a couple where one person wants to have kids and the other one does not. They have this thing as well where they almost always have a person, normally it's the man, who has either never been in love or never told a woman that he loves them. And they always blow this up and make it a red flag, which drives me crazy. They focus on the fact that, oh, well, he's 39 and he's never been in love. He was in a relationship for a year and a half and he wasn't in love with her, so maybe he'll never be in love with me. This is the thing. You all have to remember that we all change from year to year, right? So whatever age he was when he had that one and a half year relationship, let's say he was even 36, 37 years old, not that long ago. Heirs at 36 is not the same as heirs at 39. Heirs at 36 may have never signed up for this show. Heirs at 39 was like, I'm ready to be married. I'm going to do this. And also... Every woman and every man is different. So yes, you can be with someone for a long time and not be in love with them because maybe it just doesn't feel right to you. But that's you and that specific person. That doesn't mean that with Jasmine, it's never going to happen. So I really hate that they always turn this into a huge, big thing. And I know that they're going to focus on this probably every single time we see them on screen. Like, well, I don't know because he hasn't said he loves me. And I know he didn't tell the other girl they loved her. And what if he never did it? And she's going to like drive herself crazy. And I just don't think it's fair, not fair, but yeah, fair. I don't think it's fair to see that as a red flag and really focus and hone in on that. Because again, this is a new relationship for him. This is a new woman. So there's no telling what will happen between them. And like he told her, there's, there's a chance maybe you won't be in love with me after eight weeks. He was like, anything is possible on my end or your end. So I'm hoping that she won't have that be the focus. And I'm hoping that she won't focus on like trying to get him to that point in eight weeks 
Because that's when you drive yourself crazy even more because now you're not really enjoying the process. You're not enjoying the journey. You are focused on that ticking time clock and thinking you have to check all these things off by the time the timer goes off. And it doesn't have to be that way. So that's all I'm going to say about them. I don't mind Jasmine and Eris. I think I actually, I don't know if I like them together necessarily. I don't know if I like them as a couple, but individually, I actually like both of them. Okay, let's go to Gina and Clint. I've said since the season started, something about Clint. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to care for him. He didn't necessarily bother me this episode, but I'm just not feeling it with them. I don't know what it is, but I just, it's, I'm not really feeling. And I actually think I like Gina. As a couple, I don't know. They also had an interesting thing that happened with them. They went on some kind of excursion, like a bus group. And I guess the bus got lost. And then the water eroded the road, so they were detoured. And they were just like, most of the episode, they were just in a van. I just thought that was really interesting. Like, huh. And I also thought that kind of sucked. Because the person who's recording them, whoever that camera person is, and maybe a sound person, who knows how many people were actually assigned to them, had to be lost as well for an hour and a half, two hours. I was like, oh, that sucks. They're probably hungry. That's where my mind went. He was impressed by the fact that despite all of the detouring and the delays and like a storm and all this stuff, that she maintained her calm. And she kind of said the same thing about him. She was like, you know, you were calm. You were chilled. You know, it, this situation could have been escalated but we both kind of maintained ourselves and just enjoyed being with each other. So I appreciate that you did that. Appreciate you did that, whatever. She also said that she hopes that he will help her calm down and not work too much. She's the person who owns a salon. I think owns a couple salons and is always focused on her work, even to the point where on the honeymoon, she did payroll on her honeymoon. And so it seems like she's more structured and he's more spontaneous, but she's still adventurous, which is the main thing that he wants is someone who won't be afraid to do new things, won't be afraid to travel. And she's not afraid to do those things, which is good. She just hasn't really made time to do those things. She said that she wants someone who is supportive, but not needy. And he asked her a very good question, which I thought was an excellent, excellent question. He asked her, have you ever had someone who was a contributor? I love that question because what he's essentially asking her is it's one thing to be supportive of what your person is doing supportive of their lifestyle supportive of their job or whatever it's another thing to be a willing contributor to the joy of their life to contribute to their happiness contribute to their peace contribute to their stability so i love and even though I don't care for Clint, I loved him asking that question. I've never heard that question before, but I really liked it. I thought it was a great, great question to ask. And she, okay, this is where things go left. So she told him they're having drinks. Mind you, they're having drinks. It's a beautiful scenery. Everything is very chilled and relaxed. And they're both just saying, you know what? I like being around you. I really, you know, we get along so great. I'm really enjoying the way things are going. However, she told him, I, you know, the only thing missing for me is the physical chemistry. You know, it's not like combustible because when I saw you, <coughs> ooh, pardon me, moi. when I saw you at the end of the aisle, you had very gingery features. I don't typically like gingery features. So we don't necessarily have that. And she's like, what do you think? And he was like, you know, you know how the editors do. It was a nice, long, pregnant pause. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I feel the same. You know, I, I definitely feel the same. But I don't know if he was saying that because he actually feels the same or if he felt he needed to say it in the moment because she said something. And you could tell he was very startled and taken aback by her saying something. Here's my thing. Because, again, we have this almost every season as well, where one person is not attracted to the other that they're paired with. And again, like I just said, attraction can grow. And like I said, with Shaquille and Kirsten, the conversation seemed to be a little seamless. And her making that comment was, it wasn't mean the way she phrased it. I'm not even saying that Gina was being mean either. But I think there's a stark difference between the conversation Kirsten and Shaquille had about her not initially being attracted to his bald head and the conversation that Gina and Clint had. Very, very different energy. 
and very different outcomes. What I don't get is if you are not attracted to a person for whatever reason, what purpose do you have to tell them? Especially when they did not ask you. Clint did not ask her ever, do you find me attractive? What did you think when you saw me? Or do you think I'm cute? Whatever. He never asked this question of her. Again, they are sipping drinks on the beach, chilling. Why was it important for you, Gina, to say that to Clint? I don't understand why. What purpose could that have served? Because now, it, it's one thing to think it and to hope for the best because the experts pair me with this person. Obviously, they see something in him that they know I need, so I'm going to see this through. That's fine, well, and good. But to say it out loud, now, Clint, whether he believes he was attracted to you or not, He's not going to be because he's not going to put himself out there and look vulnerable as the person who likes you, knowing that you don't like him in that way. So I don't know if he's lying or telling the truth. No idea. But now he's going to be on the defensive. Or what's happened sometimes, if a person is told that they're not attractive, that person who is quote unquote unattractive is going to work overtime to get you to like them. Most of the time it's the woman. So just like last season, it was Kristen and Mitch. Mitch told her on the honeymoon, I don't find you attractive, right? So essentially for a minute, she lost herself because she was trying to overcompensate for him not being attracted to her by being all those other things that she knew he wanted. She wasn't necessarily being fake, but she definitely was not. She put all of her needs on the back burner because she was trying to make him like her more, basically. I don't see Clint doing that. I don't I don't see him caring enough to do that at all. He doesn't seem like the type. But regardless of whether he is or he isn't, now, again, he's going to be on the defensive. And now it's going to put this wedge in their relationship. It's been four days. You don't need any wedges, any, like, you don't need any of that stuff right now. But I feel like it's going to put almost a permanent wedge in their relationship because he's going to know that she's not attracted to him at all. So now he's going to make it up in his mind to tear her down to make her feel bad about herself because that's typically, unfortunately, how men tend to react to that kind of comment. So I just thought it was weird. I thought it was so unnecessary. I didn't think it was mean as there, but it was, why? What is the point? Why, what do you gain from bringing this up? You could have kept this to yourself. You could have talked to the other wives about it, but telling him, and granted, she doesn't know him. She doesn't know how he's going to react to it, but he's still a man. What, I mean, nobody wants to hear that unattractive, but men especially, like now he's just going to get downright nasty and mean about it because he's going to feel some type of way. I just don't understand. Don't get it. I don't see good things happening for Gina and Clint. Personally, I don't think they're going to make it at all. I do have high hopes for Kirsten and Shaquille. I have high hopes for Nicole and Chris. Jasmine and Eris, maybe. Everybody else, no. I thought the episode, even though they've shortened it now to an hour and a half, which I actually appreciate, it moved a little slow for me. I thought it was a little bit boring. Maybe because Dominique and McKinley bore me so much. I don't know. But next week, the couples are all going to get together at the honeymoon. And so it'll be very <clears throat> interesting to see side by side how they each react to their spouse. Hear the conversations that the guys have by themselves, that the girls have by themselves. because Those are always kind of telling as well. So I'm interested, but let me know what you guys think. Comment below what you think about Gina telling Clint that she is not attracted to him. Do you think it's necessary to have that conversation with your spouse, especially day three of the thing? Like, tell me, what do you think about that? Also, do you guys like the fact that they have switched to an hour and a half format instead of two hours? And what do you guys think about the fact that we still just had these two experts and then two random experts who pop in every once in a while. Like I would, I, and this is an aside. What I personally want, when Dr. Viviana came on the show, she was not originally on the show. She came in whatever season, maybe five or six she came in, right? But when she came in, she came in as a full-fledged expert. Like she was there helping to pick out the couples. She was there interviewing all the, the men and women before they were paired up. And she was there through every stage, just like Dr. Pepper and just like Pastor Cal. With these two people that they have now, Devon Franklin and I forgot the other girl's name, beautiful black girl, I forgot her name. 
But with them, like they came in in the middle last season and just kind of popped up maybe once or twice. And then we never saw them again. I need to have some stability. I need to have the actual sexologist or whoever that person is going to be there from the very beginning, helping to pick out these couples and really helping them out. I don't really like that they've kind of, it feels wishy-washy. It feels kind of weird. Either way, comment below what you think about this season so far, what you thought about last night's episode. Make sure you like this video, share this video with your friends who love this show because obviously we all love the show. Make sure you also subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my other videos. I do other things I'm married at first sight. So click the notification bell. Thank you guys so, so much for always watching these videos. I love reading your comments. It's so entertaining for me and I promise I will write you guys back. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.